Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are do continuing our budget kindred series. This time we're looking at the token elves. Um, I will be doing a full week of these. We're always going to do them in weeks now. I used to switch off every day and I think the algorithm doesn't like that, I think. So yeah, all week, all elves. I think we're going to finish the elf series this week. So yeah, that should be good. Once again, their main color is green. The elves are one of the most powerful kindred types, so if you're looking to build a, or looking for a strong um, kindred type, especially if the color identity is green, elf is a pretty safe thing to go to. Again, this is the fifth video in the series, looking at elves that have token synergy. And by budget, I mean 50 cents or less. Usually, I mean two dollars or less. This video, or this list came out under 50 cents. I wasn't even trying for under 50 cents. Um, it just happened, uh, you know, it worked out that way, which is kind of nice. We are now on Facebook, so if you want to go on Facebook, check out MTG Nerd in Korea. Uh, you can see, uh, find us there, or just like, hit like, like, and subscribe. That always works as well. Or I guess subscribe is all you really need to do. But anyway, if you want to give me any feedback or have any ideas or anything, uh, Facebook is a place to do that. Number five. Okay. Uh, Tostani summoner, or Tostani's summoner. Again, five green, white. Selesnia. Selesnia is a big elf thing, especially with tokens. You'll see that come up again. All right, so that's a one, one for seven mana. That sounds awful, right? Well, let's see. Create a two, two white knight creature token with vigilance. Not bad. A 3-3 three, three centaur creature token, and a 4-4 four, four rhino with trample. Oh, you're going to make, again, there's this 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3, three, three, and a 4-4. Four, four. So that 7 CMC is putting 10 uh, power and toughness on the battlefield. 10 is not a small amount. Um, Yeah, and it, again, it just says when it enters the battlefield, create the three tokens. So if you can flicker to this, if you've got a deck where you can flicker, get this. This is going to just like, you can potentially just keep like picking up, putting it back down and make three, uh, three creatures with total nine power and nine toughness. You can just like keep piling them up and yeah, oh boy, that's a lot. I wish there's reach in the mix, but still very good. Uh, only three cents. Yoy. Number four. Any Faye, Jetmere's second. Jetmere's one that I had on a budget list ages ago, and now it's like ten bucks now. Ah. Anyway, so red or green, green, green or white. I love the. Uh, we just did Agnes as a budget commander, and I love the ones where the commanders have like that flexibility of like you could pay three green and summon her, or three different colors of mana and summon her. Um. It makes it very easy. Anyway, so if you would, sorry, she's a 3-3. If you create one or more tokens, instead to create that many 2-2 two, two cat creature tokens with haste, or that many 3-1 green dog creature tokens with vigilance. This is about options, right? What I really want to point out is that it says whenever you would create a token or tokens, you can substitute with it cats with haste or dogs with vigilance so attack or defense and this doesn't care again it's optional you don't have to and it doesn't care what type of uh uh token you're creating you can create a bunch of food tokens very easily and make them all into cats with haste so you can just all of a sudden have a huge board state that's ready to just attack right or i guess pounds for our cats but anyway 35 cents Number three, Forest Hermit. Any Chatterfang lovers out there probably have seen this card before. Uh, definitely in my Chatterfang deck, or it was at one point. I think it should be. Three white, white, or oh, sorry, white, white. Three green, green for this one, one. It has Vanishing Three, which kind of sounds like a downside. So again, it has three counters on it. And when the last counter gets removed, I believe you um, sacrifice it, yeah. When you take off every turn, you take off one of these time counters. At the end, you sacrifice it. 
which sounds like a downside. Again, green is good at recursion, and you're going to probably put this in a deck with, like, black as well, do a Golgari thing. So you're going to have tons of recursion. This going to the graveyard just means you get to pull it back out and get that Anthem effect and more squirrels again. So anyway, when it enters, create four 1-1 one, one green squirrel tokens, creature tokens. Four 1-1s, one, and all squirrels get plus one, plus one. So those are going to be four 2-2s two, and a 1-1 one, one for five mana. That's a good deal. Mm -hmm. A little recursion, and it's going to be like even better, really. And then we 40 cents. Number two, Nadir's Nightblade. I think this is the like, number one most popular card on this list. So two and a black for a one three, not bad. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So any token leaving any token, clue token. Great, sure, that counts, right? And um, yeah, you get a leech effect. It turns any token into like, if it leaves the battlefield, they lose every each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You can potentially turn this into like a win condition. Um, in the right situation, it will be a win condition. Or it's just gonna whittle them down while keeping you like in the game and healthy. Um, it's a great combination. It's scary as well. Um, if you've got Nadir's Nightblade and just a whole bunch of tokens out on the battlefield, that board wipe they wanna cast, that's gonna like possibly take them out of the game right uh depending how good you are at making tokens once again this does not care it just says token it doesn't say creature or artifact or whatever token so if you've got even those yeah like treasure deck or something if this is in there every time you sacrifice a treasure you're getting that mana and you're doing a damage and you're gaining a life that gets out of hand makes sense number one but Tandris, I always think TARDIS when I look at that, but anyway. Five, what, uh, green, white, so Selesnya again, also seven. For uh, This is a five, seven at least, so it's higher. It's much better than the one, one, but Selesnya kind of has two major themes. I think plus one, plus one counters and tokens, right? So the token thing, you see a lot with Slesnia, definitely. Prevent all damage that we dealt to creature tokens you control. Oh my gosh. Okay, remember, it cancels damage. Damage. If it ha if they have a board wipe that says destroy all creatures, so it destroys the creatures. This does not protect you from uh, effects. This is not indestructible, right? It's not indestructible. It cancels damage. This can still do so much. You need... Just like if you've got a few tokens with reach, there you go. All your all those flyers basically can't do anything to you. And when they can't do anything to you, they're just going to go for someone else instead. This doubly good. Making your opponents fight each other is better than just like protecting yourself. Anyway, 18 cents. Oh, list. Okay, so we've got Trostani Summoner, 3 cents. Any Fade, Jetmere Second, 35 cents. Deep Forest Hermit, 40 cents. Make sure you have recursion, right? Nadir's Nightblade, 8 cents. It goes into so many decks. Metandris, 18 cents. All right, make it easy. 